Thanks everyone. Thanks for joining us for this uh, special capital raising, how to raise capital um, uh, event by John uh, Perry. Uh, before I start, I need to thank our sponsors. Uh, my name is Atula Ogada, lead organizer of Melbourne Silicon Beach and few other Silicon Beaches around the country. So those of you who don't know, we have a few people joining through Eventbrite. So please join the Melbourne Silicon Beach uh, meetup group. We don't put all our events on Eventbrite, only some. So joining the community is through the meetup. So first of all, let me share my screen and I'll share uh, sponsors who are making this uh, event possible so that, uh, John, can you give me a thumbs up? Can you see the screen? With yep, can LA see Liga? it. Okay, thanks. Yep. Uh, yeah, and uh, if everyone can uh, mute themselves, excepting John and Alexa, because we could uh, then uh, have the event going. So first of all, I'd like to thank Allied Legal, it's a law firm, uh, that has come in as a sponsor. So they're making, these sponsors are making these events possible. They are a law firm, plus they are business development advisors as well. So they have lawyers, uh, as well as uh, sales and marketing people. That is Inder, who can see on the screen. He's a sales and a business growth person. And Rahul, the lawyer, and they have a few others. And they are very, very keen to um, empower startup, uh, startups and small to medium businesses. So contact them, alliedlegal.com.au, and say that you saw... Uh, them uh, heard about them on a Silicon Beach at a Silicon Beach event. So the next sponsor we have is uh, App Demo Videos. Adam Ways from App Demo Videos is actually a uh, organizer in Silicon Beach, and he's done videos for us as well. And you can see what they do here. And it's not just any old video; they are a specialist video production company for technology products. So they do videos for apps, smartphone apps, uh, uh, software as a service, SaaS products, websites, e-commerce sites, that sort of thing. And they are very cool ways of demonstrating how a software product or website or app actually works on the web, So, which is very, um, uh, important these days. Aptimo Videos is actually a company based in San Francisco, but Adam is uh, based here in Melbourne. You can contact them through aptimovideos.com. And the uh, final sponsor, third and the last sponsor is uh, Yalma Digital. Um, they are a web development and app development company. Fires is from Yarmouth Digital Files is based in Melbourne. Their team is based in India, so they can give you a really cost-effective service for any of these services you see on the screen now. So thanks for giving me the time to do that. So Silicon, you know what Silicon Beach is. If you don't know, uh, check out, if you're new to Silicon Beach, join our meetup. I'll put the links and also uh, how to contact me and the team on the chat. And uh, yeah, connect with us. We have a lot of events coming up. We have a pitch night every first Thursday night of the month. So the next one is on the 2nd of July. Uh, that event will be is already up on our meetup. So we hope to see you there as well. Tomorrow there's a capital raising event at the same time from Allied Legal what to expect when you're expecting an investment. So it's a follow on from today's event. So make sure you come to that as well if you haven't RSVP'd already. I have spoken long enough. I'll hand over to John. Take it away, John, share your screen. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, put them in the chat. Okay, here we go. Can everyone see that? Yeah. I can see it. I'm assuming everyone can. Okay. Uh, g'day. Um, I'm John Perry. I'm going to talk maybe 25, 30 minutes, and then we can do Q&A 
um, if, if you've got any questions. So I present it as a challenge because the whole idea of getting um, people and resources and money to invest in you is for your, for your big idea, for your project is, is a challenge for sure. Um, and um, so that's why I've made the topic, how your big idea gets buy-in from smart money, people and resources, but that you don't lose control of, of your idea, your baby. So the goal for today is whether you're a beginner or your experience is to reverse the rule of gold. I'll talk about that more in a second, in a, in a minute, I should say. But basically it means you say no to the wrong investors and you, you're in a situation where you select the right investors. So before we go any further, what I regard as an investor from my experience of, is someone who puts their time resources, reputation or their money behind you as a person that helps you achieve your mission. And um, you'll see in a second when I talk more about this. And at the final slide at, at about you know, 30 minutes, I'll give you a link um, to a free indicator that's, it's, it looks like this and you can see um, it when you fill it in yourself, you download it, it's private to you and it calculates a score for you. So it's something you can look at and really see how well you relate to investors, whether they're putting in time, resources, skills or money. So what makes what I'm talking about today different to normal capital raising or investment um, workshops or talks like this is that from my experience, um, I've learned that you have to choose your investors and counterintuitively, that means you, you don't sell and you don't tell. I'll talk about that more in a second, but telling um, what happens to me is because I get a lot of people uh, approach me on LinkedIn because I'm seen as an investor and, and a serial entrepreneur. Um, the first thing I want to do after they've, link to me is send me a 20 page thing telling telling me how great and selling me how great it is and it's it doesn't work um so just very quickly about me i've done um three startups myself as a co-founder through to exit where the investors have sold have bought my own my shares I'm doing a new startup right now. Uh, we're at prototype stage or early prototype stage and we've got an investor on board. I'll talk more about that in a sec. And I'm an investor, active investor in three startups and not really relevant, but I happen to be a poet as well. And I've presented my work, my approach to being investable at um, Swinburne University's um, Graduate School of Entrepreneurship and those other places, including, you know, hubs, the Victorian government, and you, you'd, you'd all know hub and so on and so forth. So basically, um, I've done three startups and I've assisted in the last um, six years since I sold out of my last one. Um, I've assisted about 30 founders to get started or to get funded further down the track. Um, so I've been doing a lot right, but I've also done a lot wrong. So I'm going to just talk about what not to do from my own experience. And it's basically comes down to don't sell and don't tell versus asking and rewarding. And I'm going to show you how you can actually ask more people to invest. And it's all based on, on rewarding. So, uh, that's what we're going to unfold today, how you actually express what the reward is. So telling and telling, which I did a lot of and which people, it's, it's, pre, it's pretty common for people to suggest you, you create your five page or your 20 page slide deck. And then you go out and you start um, pitching to all, all anyone who can listen. And that's a very quick way to lose the initiative. The other assumption that I've noticed in myself and many, many people that I've worked with is that we assume that money has the power. 
which is where the rule of gold comes in. And I'll show you how to reverse that. And you very quickly lose leverage that way. And same with your focus on money. You think, I need the money, I need the money. And it's a very quick way to lose attention of people because what they want is for you to build a relationship. And it, the other one, one way is building a relationship. The other way is coming across as needy. So selling and telling, I did that a lot up, up until my second um, start, uh, startup, like halfway through the, the set on the second round of fundraising um, for the second startup, which was in marine biotechnology. I got a lot of coaching and I shifted from selling and telling to speaking the language of business of rewards because I was just losing conversations that I probably could have probably could have got them interested, but they just become bored because they realize um, it's all about me. John thinks it's all about him. Whereas our job as founders is to engage people in the rewards that we're giving. So I have done a lot of things right, obviously. And what I've learned over the last 25 years um, is, is three things. And, and this is what we'll be talking about when, um, in this presentation. And what they're about is, is, is that people invest in people. That's just a, a truism, um, I, I would say. It's not written down anywhere by anyone wiser than me, but it's my experience that in the end, um, it's all about you when, you, when you're raising um, money, when you're bringing people on board as team members or joint venture partners or people you go to to help you, to recommend you and refer you. And what they look for is, is the structure and they, you need to develop their respect and they need to see that you're not waiting for the money, that you're, you're creating traction so basically what it's about, um, and this is the guts of what we're talking about today, how do you build relationships with other people? And that's the very reason why we must know, For we're talking about business, not other relationships. Um, we're talking about your project, whether it's a creative project, a business project. You do need other people. You can't do things without other people. So, Rewards the language of business. There's four rewards and we're, and we're going to talk about how you, because, because to make that point again about people invest in people, I'd, I'd venture this statistic again, it's not written anywhere, you can't look it up uh, on Google, but, um, well, you might find one of my talks if you did look it up, but 70% of the final decision to invest whether you're uh, once you're happy with the tech and you're happy with the market, let's say, then the final decision whether someone's coming on board as a team member or a co-founder or a cash investor or an early adopter customer or a joint venture partner or someone who just reaches out to help you is based on you, their final decision, 70% of the final decision based on you. And... Remember, I'm saying who are investors are people who help you with your mission. So, because you need these people, you need all sorts of people to get yourself going. Um, so, I'm going to launch into it now. Um, that was um, the the intro, but it sets it up nicely. And so, what I'm going to talk about today is not everything you need to know to get funded, but it's the, it's the starting point it's a strong strong starting point and of course uh, i have to say this because it's about money um, there's no promise of of financial or other results so here we go so here are the three discoveries again um, that i i've learned through my 25 years of doing this myself and helping other folk so how do, how do you get investors to buy and how do you say no to bad investments or particularly bad funding and why we tend to wait for money and what to do about it. So the first one, um, the first one, how, 
investors buy into you, even when you're not entrepreneurial, you're not really financial or you're not tech savvy. And there's, there's plenty of those people nowadays. So I'll give you, I'll give you a case study of me. Um, when we did the, the, when I did my second startup, it was in marine biotechnology. That's um, aquaculture or fish farming, whatever name you want to put on it. You're basically breeding, growing out and selling um, fish. We did two species. The same team did two different species and two different businesses. But did I know anything about aquaculture or marine biotechnology? And also, am I someone who loves numbers? The answer is, do I build spreadsheets? The answer is no, I don't know anything at the time about aquaculture and I, d I still don't build spreadsheets. I love to read them, but I don't build them. So I'm not particularly financial or numerate, believe it or not. So how was I able to, um, how was I able to be the lead person in our team to bring on investors to convince one of our investors was the University of Tasmania's Launceston branch, um, whose, whose technology we were commercialising. Other investors were joint venture partners and then also cash investors because we needed millions of dollars to, to start, to even just make a start. And it was five years to positive cash flow. So it was, you know, you'd regard that as pretty risky. And was because um, using one of the four foundations of reward, speaking the language of business, you, we particularly explained the risks and how we were going to mitigate them and match them against the rewards. One of the rewards, one of the other four of the rewards that was particularly convincing for people in this case, investors, particularly the university and some of the joint venture partners and, and even the investors of cash was that we was the big picture reward, which is that we were solving two things. We were solving community employment in that area and we were also solving uh, environmental problems by by breeding fish and taking pressure off sea stock. So it become it became um, a very important thing. Of course, we had the numbers. We had people do the numbers, and we did, we did all of those things. But basically, if you look at me, I, I wasn't, I wasn't financial, and I wasn't tech savvy, and I was able to raise the money, and get other investors on board. So the second one is, how do you say no to bad funding offers and still have people uh, come to you, still have investors wanting to join you? So I'm going to give you another example. This is not about me, but it's about how we used uh, the, the four foundations of reward again, the language of reward again, to have people. This is the one where we re, uh, reverse the rule of gold. And we've only just done this. This is a person who's I'm working with right now, uh, uh, someone who's left corporate and as following their passion to build a hero technology in the medical area. Needs a lot of money for R&D, very early stage, and um, was, was out there thinking that, um, that money, money had the power, thinking and and ended up getting offered a really bad term sheet. So a term sheet is like, um, you know, one or two page document, usually one page, and it says, I'll offer you the money under these conditions, in short. And it was just horrible. And I, um, I, di I didn't want him to even go any further, but he, he insisted on continuing to talk. So we talked it all through. And... Uh, um, Eventually, um, what happened was we said no to the term sheet and uh, that an, a, immediately created respect, whereas before the respect was from that founder to the money because money has, believes it's got the call, money or, you know, starts out thinking, I'm the one who can call the shots. 
But with a good startup, with good technology and properly structured, and with, with when you follow the rule, the four rewards, um, it turns that rule of goal around. Um, you reverse the rule of goal. So once we said no, they came back and said, "Well, maybe we can we can work with you another way." It it was something that was too risky for them, as it turned out. But but now they've become a marketing partner, and um, they'll do joint venture ventures in that company in, into particular markets. And so they, um, they then introduced um, that founder to other investors. So by saying no to a bad funding offer, um, investors have come to him in one in the case of a marketing partner, a joint venture, and the other in the case of being introduced to cash investors, ca um, money investors. Um, if you say no, I'll, um, it invariably increases respect, but you need to say it because you believe in your, not, not just emotionally, um, and emotion comes into it obviously, but you, but you want to be informed. And the way to be informed is by following the four uh, foundations of reward. So the third one is why, why do we tend to wait for money? We th 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 this happens, happens to me, it still happens to me, it happens to almost everybody I work with, um, and I do a lot. I do a lot of these. Well, th this is the first online one, but I do do talks. Um, used to be workshops. M maybe I'll never go back to face-to-face -face workshops. But basically, people consider they need to prepare more and more before they get going. Um, it's just part of the, the sea we're swimming in a society to be educated, to be right, to be, to make sure you've got everything together. And, um, but uh, this is a case study about me again. Um, don't wait for the money. This is the one where I'm saying right now, I've got a new startup and we've got investor, our first investor and, and our, our prototypes only. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an early stage prototype. So it's, it's well before beta. Um, it's it's something we'll use to attract cash investment. But the investment we've got so far is from um, one of the uh, people in my community who may put cash in in later on. But initially, he's given us floor sp office space. Not that we need it now, because all of the everyone's staying at home. But at the time, it was really um, a big statement um, of confidence. And it's, um, it's, it shows up another one of the four rewards, which is, um, which is belonging or, or um, being part of a community. So he sees uh, what we're building as something that he wants to be associated with. And He's come in essentially as a joint venture partner, as a partner. Um, he's getting he's getting shares for his investment of, of um, giving us office space and access to his top technical people, and so it's it's really in, important um, because then when I did go to cash investors, I've already got an investor, someone who's committed. And it shows what, what's, what's the thing that you hear everyone asking for is traction. It's how to get traction and momentum before you've got uh, money to pay your staff members or anybody um, is you do it through understanding the four equations or the four foundations of reward and being able to make, uh, ask people to invest in this case, um, he actually uh, saw what I was doing and offered, but I had to ask him essentially to accept his offer based on, on a, a valuation of our business and where it could go. So don't wait for money. That's the message. So here's a case study that, that wraps them all up. Um, so it's basically the first one, remember, was select the right investor. So this is a, a true story. Um, one of the invest in, one of the startups I did was with three founders, two other founders, and we were having a meeting one day in the early days 
and it was on a Sunday morning and the, the guy's uh, wife's aunt was in the kitchen and she came over and she said, do you guys want some money? She could hear what we were talking about. She liked the idea. She liked the big picture part of it. Um, the reward of the big picture and being, and being part of the community that was going to bring that into being. It was, it was the, one of the, one of the aquaculture ones. And she liked that we were save, helping save the environment, creating uh, employment. And she could see that it, it would create money. And then what happened was I had to say no to her. I had to, I had to, and that's where the word Auntie Carol comes from. It's, and I tell people now, I say, it's time to Auntie Carol, um, where you tell someone no, and then it, it changes, the, it reverses the rule of gold. So what happened was she was interested and then she became more and more doubtful. And so one evening, and, and it was based on the risk and fair enough, fair enough. And I rang her one evening and I said, look, um, we shouldn't go ahead talking anymore because you're related to one of the founders and we can't, we can't have any dysfunction going on. So let's just, um, you know, you can come to the launch party and let's be friends, but don't be an investor. And then she, she, she would, she, she did become an investor in short. And because she could see we weren't waiting for the money. We had the university on board. We had joint venture partners on board. We had technicians on board. We had everyone who was going to help us make it happen on board. And then she, she ended up investing a small amount, but she invested three times as we were raising money over the, over the years. And so that's an example of, of using the four foundations of reward to reverse the rule of gold and doing it with respect both ways and doing it powerfully and effectively. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you something now, how you can put all that together. Um, and um, so I think I put this 35 minutes, but I think I've been going for less than 35 minutes. But anyway, um, I haven't covered everything you need, but you can do a practical next step. And that's what I'll talk about now for about three or four minutes. Um, so the challenge is to reverse the rule of gold. That's the challenge for any founder. Um, and um, what I'm, what I'm about, what I'm offering. So this is the selling part. <laughs> so let's just be frank about it. It's, um, it's something I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to invest in me actually. And, um, but what you get your reward is that you walk away with something really powerful that you can start building powerful investor relationships on your terms. And the, the people I work with, we, we identify ourselves as, as the investables. And that, that was a typical workshop I used to do. Um, maybe I'll do them in the future, but now I'm going to do them online. So what you, what you walk away with is your two page uh, reward pitch, which encompasses the four foundations of reward in a format that I've found is very, very, that's page one. And that's a real one. I've crossed out the sensitive pieces, but you can see it covers the headings and the other side covers other headings. And basically, um, you um, build your reward pitch with me and you get templates, you get workshops. We do a bi-weekly live walk, walk through and you do one-on-one -on -one private with me and you, you get this one here, you um, learn the language of business so that it's something you can have and be powerful with. Here's an example of one of the templates that helps you build your two pager. That's a fillable PDF. Um, that's the first page of it. And it covers what investors are looking for. Um, it, you write it basically through the lens of the four rewards. And so what we're talking about is something practical. It follows this 12 page guide and um, it's worked for corporate skis. I'm working with those three people, types of people right now, but you, you've got to have a, reward pitch that gives you the confidence to go out talking to team potential team members partners and funders 
And so these are the tools, as I just said, templates, worksheets. You start getting your messages clear. You, you um, know what to work on and we do it step by step. And you've got deadlines and you've got support from me. So here's the, here's the cell. It's a, this is what I used to charge for the workshop, uh, workshops. But this is what um, I'm offering to Silicon Beach. And that's the team price. So if you've got a team um, or you're wanting to get a team together, get them along. Um, it's $47 for one or four. Or even if you've really got a team of six, you can bring them along. So you can register and then the others can come on board for all of the, the sessions and be part of it. Um, I think the, have you put the link in chat? Yes, yes. I, I created a bit.ly link, John. So it, the link is a bit different in chat. Oh, okay. No, yeah, no problem. It is, anyway, yeah, it's, it's, it's linked to the sign up page. Um, yeah. So, and what I'll do is for anyone who goes all the way through the challenge, um, it's, it's over four weeks um, with all those materials. I'll, I'll choose if, you know, if, if it's, if it's a res if it's a good, a good one. I'll choose one and to become a potential private client, and um, I won't. I won't charge cash for that. I'll we'll work out some sort of uh, equity thing. And for three people who or teams who follow through, regardless, I'll um, I'll I'll give them the communications module, which is a live. Um, it's two live um, forty-five minute sessions, and so. Go to the chat box. So here's what people mostly think. I'm not good at pitching. I don't have a prototype. It's just me at the moment. I need to prepare a bit more. I'm already funded. So they're the things I used to say to myself. So I just say, get a, get a reward pitch. Um, so that's what happens. The Bible leave we walk through and the private one-on-ones, they're the ones that'll get you the results. Um, because you're committed and you've got the templates and worksheets and you walk away with your reward pitch, if, if you do the work that is, and you speak the language of business. So that's the thing. Here's the, um, here's the, uh, the thing I offered at the end that I'd show you at the end for free, which is this slide here. So this is a really good thing. Uh, I'd, I'd recommend anybody uh, have a look at this. Um, so just put your email in chat now. It's it's this thing here. You do it at your home. You don't send it back to me unless you want to um, get have a discussion about it. But basically, you you fill it out yourself according to those questions, and it calculates a score for you. It's just a really good assessment of of what you um, of your relationship to to how you are playing in the world of getting investors, whether they're people you want on your team, whether they're people you want to do a joint venture or partnership with, or whether they're cash investors or an early adopter of your product or service. That's a, it's a really good assessment. It's been built, I've been on quite a few assessments. It's built on um, and prizes and competitions and it's built out of those. So I think that's, um, that's it really. Um, if, if you want that, just put your email in, in the, um, in the chat, chat room and just say, send, send me the thing and I'll, I'll do that. I'll just send it to your email quite apart from whether you're interested in the offer or not. So over to question and answers. If anyone's got a question. Yeah, feel free to unmute yourself and you can put your hand up. Uh, and John, if you can uh, stop sharing your screen and oh, you yeah, can sure. see sure. everyone's, uh, everyone's yeah. faces and I might take a little screenshot as well. Um, that was really good. I put in the chat a few links. I put in the chat the bit.ly link I created for John's event, uh, first draft uh, event as well as the pitch night, because John was talking about pitching. We have a monthly pitch night. Next one is on the 2nd of July. Come and, uh, 2nd of June. Come and, uh, 
come and do a 90 second pitch. It's a practice pitch. You don't have to yeah, have anything uh, work, everything worked out. Just, yeah. So thanks everyone for listening which, now. Which is the, um, which is the yeah. link to the, to the follow up thing? Yeah, follow up thing is that's bitly.com jp. That's oh, that John thing Perry. halfway up to everybody. Yeah, gotcha. RT58, yeah. I, I see I'll, it. Put, yeah, yeah. I'll put that in again. Put it in so, again so, because I couldn't even find it myself. There you are. The <laughs> last last link in the chat is that it's jp uh, by I, John Perry. And, and, uh, and I, I can see, is that correct? Um, yeah, if you Jessica click. and Michael want the, want the, um, the the indicator i can think i think that's what that means okay yeah no no problem anyway let, let's do q a if anyone's got it just really um go for it like as long as it's about <laughs> as long as it's about the topic <laughs> yeah yeah so anyone has a question put your hand up or the hand up sign or, 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 a, statement, hand or sign. a statement yeah a statement as well feedback is good if you think what i'm talking about is rubbish or it's good, whatever, or a question. Uh, this is Alexa. Just a quick yeah, note. Um, firstly, I've been taking some notes. Uh, there were a lot of good things in what you were saying. Uh, I put them in the document, which I'm going to share the link again in the chat. And also, John, if you can also leave your email in the chat for people who want to send you an email. Uh, yeah. Oh, sure. You want me to put it in? Yeah, because some because maybe not everyone would like to send an email in the chat in the public chat. If you also put your email in the chat, they can actually email you directly uh, for your program. Uh, you, you want me to type my email in now? Yes, in the chat. Okay, so sure. Yeah. yeah, and yep, also to show that uh, we also put it in the follow up. Yeah, and also I'll put your LinkedIn, John. So because I'll, I'll paste uh, because I'm connected with you yeah. on LinkedIn. Increasingreturns.com. There we are. Oh no, I've only. Um, did I just do that to you, Alex? No, no, to everyone, so ah, people can. Oh, there we, there, there we go. There we go. Like Zoom chat is a bit confusing. Yeah. Now, now you got it. Now, did you? Did you? No, you. You want me to do it to everybody or just to you, Alexa? No, not to everybody. Uh, oh, okay. Sure. Hang on. Oh, I did the same mistake. I just sent it to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, now everyone can see. And I'll also put... there, there we go, perfect. And I have also put John's LinkedIn uh, URL to everyone in chat. And sure. we'll put it in, Alexa, if you can put it in your document as well. What we'll do is after the event, when we share the recording, we can share your document as well with everybody. So that, that's a good document. So I, I put these links there as well. So, so any questions? You, Anyone? Go ahead. Yep. No one's got a question, sounds like. Um, what about some feedback? What about someone saying something to let, let okay. me know? Was, was it clear? Was it interesting and clear, for example? Yes, Michael. <laughs> started a little bit all the time, but uh, I've signed up for your uh, pitch while you were going through, so that's why oh, I've inquired. Good on you, mate. I thought, oh, well, sounds interesting for for forty nine dollars, not forty seven. <laughs> but uh, is that what I put? Forty nine, not forty seven. Oh, yeah, you owe, me two, you owe me two dollars. Yeah. <laughs> my bad, my we, bad. That's really bad. Isn't it? We, so I've so, we, signed no, up. We charge two dollars. We charge. <laughs> We charge two dollars extra from people coming from Adelaide. Yeah, well, that's fair enough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a two dollar cross border tax. <laughs> ah, is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get on, we'll, we'll get on you. Oh, um, left, yeah, that's really bad. I do, I do apologise for that, everybody. Um, I got, I got Steve yeah, Marshall's 49. mobile number in my phone. I might text him and tell him that he should charge Victoria for going over and helping him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and thanks for all those who put your um, LinkedIn profiles on chat. Kimberly, I already sent you a, a LinkedIn connection. You're in Sydney, so yeah, look forward to your interesting profile. You're, you're, you're basically. Uh, I don't even know what my people. link. 
Yeah, you can go to your LinkedIn profile and copy it, and then it will come up. Yeah, yeah, you are. You are into you are helping Michael, people, said people with business development, Kimberly. Uh, sorry, what was your question? Um, no, you were you you help people with their business development. Is that what you do? Uh, that's that's correct. So um, a couple of years ago, uh, I started a, just sort of a a small sort of marketing consulting, sort of like a boutique services. And mm-hmm. my background's in marketing, uh, digital in particular, but also print. And then I got into business development a couple of years ago in the tech space. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking about starting a, a tech company in about two years. I'm trying to mm. do some research, so. Okay, mm. good. You're in um, the right spot. John, I have a question for you. Yes. Um, so two, two questions maybe. Um, so the first one is, um, you talked a little bit about, uh, rewards, um, and just because the terminology is not something that I'm familiar with, uh, the, the, uh, worksheet that you're asking, let's say for a potential client to fill out, is this focused on the pitch or the other aspects that you, um, that you're trying to get when you're first sort of doing your first initial consultation to get understanding of a business idea or, um, in order to be sort of investor friendly or um, take a health check of the company? Um, I'm not sure I, can you just say that again? I'm not entirely sure I understood what you said. That, that's my bad, not you. It just, I just want to make sure I don't start talking about something else. Um, are, you, are you saying, um, the reward pitch is something new to you and you're wondering what, what you do with it. Is that what you're saying? No. Not, not exactly. So I'm very familiar with startup companies giving a pitch and having like a partner yeah. pitch deck. Of course. Of course. Yeah. So well, maybe the terminology is parallel or the same. I'm just trying to clarify terms. If um, it looked like from the screenshot on your uh, presentation that it was a worksheet that you fill out, let's say, company overview, financials, management, et cetera. Um, is that related to defining a pitch for a presentation? Ah, uh, now I'm with you, now I'm with you. Something else? I just wanted to kind of clarify terms. Um, gotcha, yeah, that, now I'm with you, yep, yep. It's, that's what you said the first time, I just didn't, I didn't hear you properly. Um, okay, sure, sure. So the, the reward pitch um, is, uh, includes financials, includes where the thing's going. Um, it's, it's just that putting it all in um, and going through the process of building the t- it in two pages, um, I find very, very effective in helping people get their thinking together because very often people do very long um, business plans or they do very long um, slide deck pitches and they don't actually um, get to the, to the guts of it, which is how do, how are investors, people who come on board, whether they've got money or resources or time to invest, how are they going to get rewarded? That's why I call it the reward pitch because um, does that make more sense? Uh, yeah, I think so. So is it is it more the reward for, let's say, the CEO or founders um, versus the reward for the investors? Very, very, very good question. So it'll help me make it clear mm-hmm. next time I do a another um, another uh, webinar like this because um, obviously I didn't make it clear so um, the, w- when you define the rewards obviously you're included as a founder but the, 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 the moment that you start to talk to other people um, that's when that's when you need to build the relationship with them and the and the most powerful communication, is is behavior which is essentially that you're saying to someone by showing them a reward pitch this is how you'll get rewarded obviously if you know how the um the incoming person the incoming investor is going to be rewarded then you know how you're going to be rewarded as a founder you're um because you're covering off on the four foundations of reward which is what we deal with in the in the in the in the does that make more sense uh, yeah, I think I have a better understanding. So then I have a follow-up question, unless someone else wants to chime in here. Um, but uh, what I was going to ask is, uh, do you ever consult or 
offer advice to people who you know are not looking for investment they want to bootstrap their company but they want to be sort of friendly to investors long term let's say they don't want to raise money for five ten years because they really want to have positive cash flow and they want to build the company themselves so making it attractive but they're they're pretty set on not accepting investment is that in your area of expertise it's not um it's something I do. I have at the moment. I have about six private clients, and they um, and they do run across a whole gamut of small business through to typical startup founders. So the answer is yes. But in in the um, in the reward pitch program that we're doing um, online, this four week thing, um, it won't really matter what your business is because you'll you'll still put it through the 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 grid or the perspective uh, and the, the questions so that you can fill out the reward pitch. And um, so the answer is yes and yes, basically. Because mm. not everybody needs to raise funds, but, they, but everybody needs people on board. Um, so, so that's the spin that I, uh, or I shouldn't say spin, but that's the perspective that I have is that you can't build anything without people. Even, even if, when I did my poem, for example, I, in order to um, perform that, I, and to, to make, publish it and perform it, there was, I counted, there was about 16 people involved in one way or the other, um, whether they were helping me or whether they were being paid by me. But you need teams of people to do anything and people need to be rewarded and um, they're much more enthusiastic if they understand not all there's only one of those rewards is financial the other ones the other ones are related to um, emotion and aspiration and those those things and it makes just a huge difference in selling or presenting or pitching if you understand how to build relationships um, thanks for your questions by the way because it made it um, made it clear that I hadn't made those points very clear. Um, and I, yeah. I really appreciate your questions. Thank you, Kimberly. No yeah. problem. I, I'm not sure if it wasn't clear. It was just not clear to me. So I wanted to. Oh, no, but that's, I think it's very good feedback. I'm, I've really yeah. valued it. Thank you. It's good. Thanks, Kimberly. Yeah, I, I appreciate about the, what you said about people. Silicon Beach wouldn't be what it is today without people and we call them pirates. Alexa is one of the pirates who have been around for the last four years or so. Oh no, maybe six years. Yeah. So, and Alexa has always been telling me, hey, not everyone is after money because we don't pay them. They're volunteers. So, but it's about saying thank you and it's about appreciating them. And I have not been, Alexa is right, he has pointed out that I have not been always very good at expressing my appreciation. So there you are, I'm changing. <laughs> it's very, it's very pertinent what you said there. With that, I'm going to stop the recording, but please stay on because I have a feeling some people are a bit reluctant to ask questions because it's been recorded. So thanks to everyone who have been watching the recording on Silicon Beach TV, YouTube. I'm going to stop the recording and throw to more questions. Thanks. Yeah, thanks very much.